Good afternoon. The paper we present today results from a collaboration with Eike Best and Evgeny Erfeyev from Oldenburg. It concerns choice free petri nets, especially in the context of synthesis problems. So I will first explain the context in which this work was conducted. If we start from a system, we may first model it in order to capture the uh, features that interest us in this, that system, and then we may analyze this model in order to derive its behavioral properties. We may also go the other way around, starting from the properties considered as a behavioral specification from which we derive through a synthesis, if it's possible, a model of some class with these properties, which may in turn be considered as a structural specification. And from it, we may implement it into a system. We may combine the two approaches in a re-engineering problem where we start from some model, for instance, and we construct a, another one and a system corresponding to the other model. We sh shall not do it here. Instead, if since this conference is mainly concerned with petri nets, we may, of course, use petri nets as the class uh, under consideration. Then the behavioral properties may be captured by the reachability graph of that net. The other way around, we shall not start from a reachability graph, but for, from the structure of uh, some reachability graph, that means a label transition system. And then we shall synthesize this into some Petri net of some class. And again, we may implement it. And especially, I will be interested by the class of bonded choice free nets. But when I explain that to some colleagues, very often they ask me why I'm so interested in this specific class of nets because this reduced the expressivity of the general class of PT nets, for instance. And in fact, there are three points where this choice has an important impact. The first one, and for me maybe the most important one, is the implementation issue. Since Petri nets are especially good to model uh, features like uh, uh, concurrency and choices and uh, liveness and things like that, the idea is to implement the net in the form of a parallel distributed program where each place corresponds to a memory structure uh, exhibiting the tokens uh, available in the place at each uh, state of the evolution and transitions correspond to a process in the program. Since the places must correspond to a memory structure, we need, we need boundedness in order to be able to uh, represent any reachable marking of the place. As far as the transitions are concerned, we may, for instance, use a naive implementation of that kind, where repeatedly we check the availability of the needed resources. In some are missing, we shall retry after some time. If they are all, uh, available, we collect the needing, needed token, and then we process the action corresponding to the transition, possibly using the hidden information of the black tokens, because here we consider that the tokens are black, but that means that they are black as far as the control flow is concerned, 
Otherwise, it may happen that these tokens carry some information that may be used, for instance, no during the action. Afterwards, we may produce the output tokens, again, possibly with some hidden information, depending on the one use on the used tokens. There are many variants. For instance, we may combine the production of tokens with the action of the transition. It's not necessary to wait for the end of the action before outputting the tokens. That means that we may consider that outputting the output tokens is part of the action of the transition. But the problem is that, as such, this does not work. For instance, <coughs> in that case, it may happen that transition T3 sees that all its needed tokens are present. But when it decides to take them, it may happen that conflicting transitions, for instance, here T1 or T2 or both, meanwhile have taken these tokens before. <clears throat> Possible to uh, avoid this problem by uh, implementing the fact that when T3 observes that, for instance, place P3 has the token it needs, then T3 immediately absorbs it so that it will not be able for another uh, transition to absorb it meanwhile. But then it may happen that later T3 be observes that the other tokens or some of the other tokens are not available. And then in order to avoid uh, creating an artificial deadlock, it may be necessary to give back the token already absorbed before, during the uh, section of the process. It's possible to avoid, again, this problem by blocking all accesses to places in one critical section. I implement it with a semaphore or monitor, for instance, but this is not efficient. And also, for me, it's not exactly a distributed solution. A better solution is to block progressively all the input places of the transition by embedding the critical sections in uh, one in each other. But this limits the efficiency again. And more than that, it is necessary in that case to follow some order in between the, uh, the places, again, to avoid the creation of artificial deadlocks. And that means that the transitions must first agree on a global order which is not, again, exactly what I would call a distributed solution. Fortunately, all those problems disappear if there is no conflict between the transitions. That means if each place has only, or at most, one transition needing tokens from it, that's exactly the class of free choice nets. In that case, for instance, it's never necessary to give back tokens that the transition has already absorbed because we know that no other transition will need it in the future. There are other uh, interesting points concerning uh, choice-free nets. The next one concerns the synthesis issue itself. It may be observed that restricting the target class does not necessarily simplify uh, the synthesis process. In particular, it is known that synthesizing a uh, weighted place transition net is uh, polynomial in the size of the transition system we start from. But if we decide to search for a safe net, for instance, that means if we fix the bound on the marking, then suddenly the problem becomes and be complete. 
This is not the case for chose free nets. It's indeed simpler to synthesize them. Uh, in particular, synthesizing a net amounts to solving a series of uh, linear constraints. And in the case of choice free nets, we may reduce the number of systems to be solved and also the size of each system to be solved. And finally, the choice of bounded choice free net has an impact on uh, what may be called a general analysis issue. Indeed, restricting the target class may lead to interesting properties common to all models of that class. This is particularly rich for choice free nets and may be used in a pre synthesis phase. It means that if we start from a, not a net of some class, but from the whole class of those nets. A general ana analysis means deriving properties common to all the models of that class. If these properties are easy to check, we may incorporate them in a pre-synthesis phase so that if one of those properties is not satisfied, we may immediately, immediately stop the synthesis and moreover produce interesting error messages. More interesting than simply saying, well, some system of linear constraints may not be solved. For instance, in the case of bounded choice free nets, we previously obtained a long series of properties that has to be satisfied. And all those properties are rather easy to check, especially if we do it in the order uh, presented here. The first one is the general, a general set of property saying that the transition system we start from must be finite. Otherwise, the boundedness is not uh, satisfied. It must be deterministic since we don't consider labeled nets. That means that no two arcs with the same label may come from some state no go to some state it must be totally reachable that means that each state in the transition system is reachable from the initial state and it is persistent meaning that if two different labels originate from some state they form a diamond the next properties are all connected to small cycles that means cycles where the uh, Parig vector counting the number of time each uh, labels occur in that cycle. So the small cycle are such that this Parig vector is not uh, dominating another one. And all the Parig vector of this, this small cycle, they must be prime, so there's no non trivial common divisor, and they must be disjoint. The short distance property says that for each state, all the shortest paths from the initial state to S have the same Parig vector, which is called the distance to S. And these distances may not dominate the small cycle Parig uh, that were obtained in the previous property. Then the reduced distance property says that for each state S, not SR, in the transition system and for any small cycle per vector phi, there must be a state R such that the distance of R is the distance S reduced by phi, where the reduction means simply a, a difference but limited by zero. If we get a negative component, then we replace it by zero. And the earliest Parig cycle property says that for any small cycle Parig vector phi, any state S in this transition system and uh, any small cycle around S with Parig vector epsilon disjoint from phi, then there is a cycle with Parig vector epsilon around the state 
R, which was obtained here. So with distance delta S uh, reduced by phi. And remarkably, recently, we obtained a new property of that kind, which may be called a co-enabling property, because it means that if a label is enabled at some state, and if some uh, constraint easy to check is satisfied for another state, then the same label must be enabled also for that other state. The property uses a small definition. If epsilon is a small cycle parallel vector, T epsilon is the support of epsilon. And if X belongs to the support of epsilon, T X is the same as T epsilon. And T zero is the set of labels not belong to any cycle. And the new proposition then says that in a bounded choice free synthesis problem, if X belongs to the support of Epsilon and uh, X is enabled by S but not by S prime, and if this linear constraint is satisfied, then the synthesis problem is not solvable in the class of choice free nets because we should have a co enabling property. So X should be enabled at S prime two. There are some special cases which may be of interest when S and S prime are uh, reachable in one sense or the other direction. For instance, here we may derive that this transition system where the dots are any other uh, labels may not be uh, solved in the class of choice free nets because we have here a small cycle. Well, it's small if there is no, no smaller one here. Uh, we choose for F one half, we observe that X is uh, being B is uh, enabled here. And for that pass, we have that constraint, which is expressed in the form of a fraction of the parallel vector Epsilon. And in this case, it is satisfied, meaning that in fact, in uh, the initial state, we should have B enabled since it is enabled after AB. We may go the other way around, like here. Indeed, here. initially we have A and B. If we follow AAB, we get this state and with this path, the constraint here is also satisfied with respect to this uh, small cycle. In fact, that the same as before. And that means that B should also be enabled at that state, which is not the case. So again, we derive that the synthesis is not possible in the class of choice free nets. Interestingly, these two special cases are equivalent to the general one if the transition system is reversible. That means if it is always possible to go back to the initial state. Now that we have completed our set of uh, needed properties, we may wonder if we have a complete set of properties. That means that a set such that if they are all satisfied, then it is sure that the system satisfying those properties is synthesizable in the class of choice free nets. We obtained this kind of grail for uh, mark graphs, for instance. But for choice free nets, this is not the case, even with our new property. And this is uh, 
maybe the simplest counterexample we found. There is another also interesting example in the, in the paper, but this one is the simple form of a single cycle. So it's reversible. Uh, it has a weighted PT solution, which is here. It satisfies all the properties we mentioned, including the new one, but there is no choice free solution. And this is obtained by trying to solve the uh, various systems of linear constraint that I mentioned before. So, in conclusion, we just justify the choice of a specific class of models for targeted synthesis. In fact, the choice free uh, nets. We introduced a new general property, easy to check to be incorporated in a presynthesis phase, but we showed also that the search for more complete properties is not finished since we don't have a complete set of properties. I thank you for your attention and uh, interest, and we may now uh, go to a question and answer phase. If we don't succeed in interacting for that phase, you may always, of course, send me your question by email. Thank you again. <laughs>